So this is definitely a very cool day I never thought would happen. I am now the very proud owner of a Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier Revision G from 1999. So the Revision G is kind of legendary, and after owning it and playing with this thing a little while, I can 100% say it definitely deserves and lives up to the hype. But even if, you know, we're not talking about a Rev G, just different iterations of the dual rectifier and the triple rectifier are legendary high gain amplifiers. Uh, I mean, they dominated new metal in the 90s and 2000s. I mean, you know, Disturbed, uh, System of a Down, Corn to this day, I mean, that's a huge cornerstone of their sound. Of course, Richard from Ramstein, various rectifiers over the years, and he has one of the best high gain tones I've ever heard in my life on a couple of those albums. And of course, one of the biggest bands to me that have used dual and triple rectifiers over the years is Cannibal Corpse. I just saw them recently actually on their tour with Mayhem, and they still busted out the old two channels and they sounded absolutely crushing live. Why are these special? Why are these sought after? Well, for some reason, Mesa nailed it for the most part. I mean, it still had a weird effects loop that a bunch of their dual rack lines have had, which has now been fixed with the uh, rectified uh, with the multi-watt series, the modern multi-watt series, but they they nailed it. The, this thing sounded great, was easy to dial in, felt great to play just it was fantastic and then in the 2000s they ruined it i've owned a mid 2000s uh three channel rectifier and while i could get some tones out of it it was nowhere near this good it was hard to dial in it had um, a low end that was just hard to deal with and sluggish and i've heard described like a flat tire and i 100 percent would agree with that and this rev g doesn't have any of that uh, absolutely no problems with the low end. It's just got that wonderful, big, clean low end that you associate with, with Mesa dual rectifiers. It has a mid-range control that's actually usable, which is crazy because these amps, like the mids can be really funny on like the, the mid 2000s ones and kind of hard to dial in, but not on this guy at all. It's really intuitive to dial in. And actually I like dialing this in kind of like, you know, basically how Candle Corpse and Corn like to dial them in on the uh, the gain channel of just kind of bumping the treble and, and bass a little bit, backing off the mid range a bit to scoop it because it just it sounds great scoop. But honestly, this one even sounds great if you really push the mids, which surprised me. I wasn't expecting that at all. All right, I gotta stop gushing about it. Let's go over the features really quick. This is a two channel amplifier. Essentially the orange channel is the vintage channel, which is the clean kind of crunch. Although if you turn the gain up, you can definitely get a lot gainier um, and then if you hit it with an overdrive you can actually get some decent high gain tones and then it also on that you can turn it on to a higher gain mode which is again more of a crunch uh, but if you max out the gain it actually just has a ton of gain on tap and then there's the red channel which is the modern channel you can actually and this was a trick that Gord Olson shared with me once I shared that I had this amplifier when you have that set you can adjust both presence controls for the modern channel. And the reason this is cool is because then you can really dial in what you want from the top end and they're both kind of adjusting different things. So like I can get, of course, more presence, more kind of sheen, uh, uh, more clarity and, and saturation from the top end, but I can also get like more pick attack and make it more aggressive sounding when I adjust it like that. So that's that's definitely pretty cool. And I'm glad Gord uh, shared that with me because I would have never thought to adjust the presence control on the other channel while on the modern channel, but it definitely works and you'll see it in the out of mix. So that's enough gushing about the amplifier. Let's hear this inside and outside of a mix. I'm not gonna do like a full massive in depth on this. Uh, like I'm not gonna switch between uh, spongy and bold on the back. We're just gonna keep it on bold because I don't want this to feel spongy. Um, I'm gonna be going with the silicone uh, rectifier instead of the tube one because I want a faster response. I don't want a slower response. 
Uh, this is, you know, I'm playing death metal on this thing. I definitely don't want a slower, spongier response. That's cool for some people. I don't need it. For the MX, we're going to be hearing this on the modern channel, the red channel, and I'm going to be boosting into that with one of the best boosts ever made for rectifier style uh, amplifiers, and that is the Peppers Pedals Dirty Tree. And I'm going to have that on the DT mode. And the guitar I'm going to be plugging into that is going to be my Solar uh, single cut, like Teletype seven string. And that has a Lundgren M7 in the bridge. And then all of that's going to be going into my Two Notes Captor X, which has a IR blend of a DV77 and VM1265 speakers. And of course, we're going to hear that all outside of the mix. I'll put up on the screen, and it should be obvious too, but I'll put up on the screen when I'm turning the dirty tree on and off, as well as when I'm switching between certain modes in the back of the amplifier, since you can't see that. Let's check it out.
Dude, why did Mesa ever switch away from this? Like, I know they fixed it with the, the modern ones. I know the modern ones, the, the multi-watts sound killer, and they got back to sounding really awesome. But why? Why did they ever switch away from how these sound? Like, and why did it take so long to get back to, to that awesome sound with the, the modern multi-watt ones? I just, I just don't get it. This is so good. This was so sought after. I mean, everybody played on these things. Absolutely everybody. And it's just, uh, and they, they loved them. That's why they're so, so collectible to this day. And I 100% get it now. They just sound so good, but they also feel way better to play than any rectifier I've touched up to this point and owned up to this point. This thing sounds massive. It just fits in a mix because, you know, normally, you know, we say don't scoop the mids, but this, when you back off the mids just a bit, it gets this super wide sound and it just slots into a mix with the bass and the drums and, and vocals. And it just, it just absolutely works. It's not necessarily a modern sound, although you can definitely get modern sounds out of it and shape it, but it's, it just has that sound. And I can't believe I found one at the incredible deal that I found it. This thing is in great condition, no scratchy pots. Uh, there are a couple of bumps and bruises on the Tolex, but really it's been babied and loved for its life. And I'm definitely gonna be taking care of it. This is a for life amp for me. I just, I, I can't believe I found one. Um, let me know down in the comments what are some of your favorite albums or bands that have used various dual wrecks over the years. If you dug the tones here, uh, this is definitely going to be on the channel more in the future, especially for like boost videos. I mean, these amps are so good at taking various boost pedals, so definitely keep an eye out for that. But thanks for watching, guys. Stay metal.